Today I'm going to be drawing out this castle building. It looks complicated but it's not really. What we are also going to be doing is looking at how our eye viewpoint affects the actual thing that we're looking at and we'll look at what I mean about that in a few seconds but this drawing will be eventually a watercolour painting so this is the drawing out section how I uh, prepare the drawing and lay it out onto the paper that I need it to be on so let's move on to that section about our eye view one of the things that I want to look at today in our tutorial is the eye line viewpoint that will determine uh, how an object actually looks let me show you for example you might think that this tower is a perfectly good drawing there you go you got you've got your tower section and then you've got your top of it and a window and a door but for that to actually be realistic your eye line view would have to be where that line is and if you went through that door your head would hit it, it wouldn't it so that's not right is it it might seem as though it is but let's look at other alternatives to make it look right. So I'll move this on a bit. That's looking more realistic. What I've done is I've said, right, that's where the line of sight is, that eye line. And if you notice, everything from the baseline the baselines are both exactly the same but what's different in this one is it tapers off into perspective that way as you can see that makes that eye line a lot lower you can do it the opposite way for, for other things. What if you're like above the building? It's very rare that you're above a building, but you can do it. And that's an example. It's the opposite way around. The building's baseline is the same there, and it tapers down, and it gives the... Uh, an impression that it's we're looking down at it in perspective and again the eye line is up here so that's something that we'll we want to look out for in our drawing today when we do it now we've got the uh, idea of where your eye is that's where it kind of alters in perspective we can analyze the image and see what needs to be done to make it look realistic because most buildings tend to be above human eyesight level this one this particular picture will be all the normal straight angles and we know they're straight because the building would fall down if it wasn't but all the angles will go in and up so we need to show that in the actual 
drawing itself. We won't be doing it too out of context because you can make it look um, totally wrong. But for dramatic effect, sometimes you can exaggerate it and make it look even taller than what it is. So that's my plan of action with regards to the drawing and the eye line perspective. Right, this is a, a very rough sketch of what I'm wanting to achieve. Uh, we've got this dramatic uh, entrance into the castle gate, if you want to call it that. I've added some soldiers there guarding the gate, although I'm not going to make a big deal about that. And uh, then the castle that rises up with a, a bit of emphasis in the background of uh, the hills. And it's got quite a dramatic skyscape, so that's going to be a, a challenge when we get to the uh, watercolour painting. But just as a, another example of looking at things from various different heights, that's a, a contrast, a, a person from above. You see more of the top of the head, you see less of the eyes, uh, less of the mouth there and it tapers down into that and obviously things that are farther away they get smaller so that's what I'm hoping to do so let's now go to the piece of paper that I'm wanting to put it onto this is the paper that it will be painted on later. Some uh, De La Rone, uh, Langton Prestige cotton paper. It's not a great idea to be doing lots of drawing on this kind of very delicate paper. So what I will do is trace around the size of the paper onto another piece of paper and then draw it onto that other piece of paper as I may be doing lots of corrections and rubbing out and things like that and that will seriously damage this paper if you're not careful. You should only really do drawing onto watercolour paper if you're just going to do very basic bits just to give you an idea where things go. But if you've got a complicated drawing, which this is, it's best to draw it separately and transfer it. So that's what we're going to do now. Right, I'm lining this up on a piece of paper that's big enough to take the piece of artwork that I'm going to be painting on. I'm just going to literally draw around the edges. Now this edge here and this edge here are uh, already set so I only need to do this edge and that edge. That gives me my area that I'm going to be drawing in. Now in watercolour painting there's always a bit of a gap so I'm, I'm I'm going to be generous here, I'm going to put 10 millimetres. I know you guys in America are going, what's 10 millimetres? Well, it's on the other side of your... Uh, just short of... Uh, just short of half, half an inch. I won't say it's half an inch, it's not. But uh, it's not far off. I'm going to uh, put another 10 millimetre there. down here. I'm using the sides of the uh, the book itself to 
keep that straight and I can't do it here so I'm just this isn't absolutely critical it's just giving me a rough idea of where I can work so now I've got let me just make that a bit more obvious for you I know not to work any farther than that The, in, that's the working area that gives me plenty of edge for when I mask it up with the with the masking tape so we're ready to draw let's get some basic forms in position uh, lines and shapes that might represent certain areas so the one glaring thing that comes to my mind is a line that goes across there and uh, that represents the uh, bottom of the gatehouse now another area that we want to uh, look at that's interesting and um, I'm, I'm not going to be very tight with this at the at the start is the position of where the the gatehouse will be there you go and at this stage I'm not using that um, that technique of altering it we're just getting basic shapes and forms in it comes in about well this is a, a a key area it's very small there and this is important it don't go up like that it don't go down it, it's virtually a straight line and i'm going to bring it out to about there and again very thin at that end and slowly but surely it it gets bigger but before you can see its full length another side of the wall kind of blocks it out and that brings it to there pretty much similar situation uh, at this side as well for this side of the wall but this seems to like lead off and curve so I'm just gonna I think just for artistic license I'm gonna curve it to about there I don't think it does do that but um, try and keep it those roughly the same at that distance and then slowly but surely curve that up until it's almost on a level now behind that there's another part of the entrance to the castle that goes about there and then we've got just slightly showing we've got the main body of the castle and that's going to go up to a, maybe around about there and then it fades back down and round about there it, it kind of comes down to a bit of a mountain and then it goes up so far I'm not going to commit myself at this moment in time to how far that is but uh, the only other thing to put in is uh, that idea of an ill there bring that down because this is a, a just an outline drawing 
you can put lines through buildings that are, are not there. It doesn't matter, it's, a, it's an outline drawing. A few other bits to clean up here, we've got, we've got that that comes round. Then there's a, another bit of a, don't know whether that's a building or not. Um, definitely light hitting something there. And then one last bit of uh, basic building. And I'm going to pull that in a little bit. These will all need adjustment as I build the image up. Right, so let's now start to um, work with that eyeline perspective. I mean, naturally, I, I do taper in anyway slightly, if, if you notice, but. We're looking from underneath virtually everything. You know when something's actually at your eye line because it, it, it tends to go level. You can't see underneath it and you can't see over it. So let's have a look at this door. That will go in. Ev it, it, it's almost not visible. But it does make a, a difference. Now, un underneath, uh, in this particular case, right, that would be flat, and you'd see underneath the edge of the door there. So I'm going to make that important. Anything underneath an edge is going to have a definite. Uh, thicker edge and so all that there that will be thick got that bit thick there that door has a, a double entrance I don't think we've got an awful lot of um, issue with that. So your next thing is, it's not quite halfway, but we've got a, a bit of a building there. And that goes up quite high, that. So again, it's, it's that, not exact straight it's tapering in and uh, that comes down but in front of that at about there there's a, a curved area now that's interesting a curved area because um, with this particular process anything that's curved it'll curve up if you're underneath it it curves up like that and because we're underneath it we're seeing less and less of the thing itself that's above but one thing to note with watercolour painting is if you want to keep your painting loose which this is going to be you need to uh, not overdo the drawing although 
for tutorial purposes and showing you I'm doing a, a lot more drawing than what I would do in fact in some cases some might even go to the point of um, here's an area that needs to, so that you can see the underside of it and again not straight you can't really it, it's a bit difficult seeing that because it fades into the crack of the rocks and we've got little bits of uh, buildings there and again that fades into the rocks and then uh, that also comes out I think that's a bit of a curve so that comes up here and it goes just short of where that is using that uh, slight angle and it is only slight in this case and then all we have to do then is there's something there it looks as though the building itself as you're getting far back you're going to put a lot less detail in but it looks as though round this area here they've got some scaffolding up doing some scaffolding work but I'm not going to put that scaffolding in uh, I see a, an outline of something there literally you don't do every teeny weeny little bit of detail so we're now getting very high up now and the higher up you get the more distorted that sense of perspective gets from your high eye line viewpoint you've got a turret there and uh, <clears throat> up from that a little bit we've got another area where that goes pretty much like that and then it comes down it's almost like a a shark thing isn't it a fin but uh, that goes like that and then a really interesting bit of the building that goes up at a, an angle We have uh, some sort of type of chimney. I think that's similar to that, like a one of those turrety kind of things. We've got there. We've got another curved area. Although you can't actually see the curve there, you can there. And again it's that same principle when you're under it it curves up and uh, an another bit there again we're fading back into the uh, distance from here on another curve that goes like that this juts out a little bit and then comes into a a turret of some sort I believe there's some bits of detail there looks like a a window of some kind and we've not got that much else to do on this 
I'm not going to be putting all the detail in at the moment. That's obviously a, an end point. There's windows. And I, I'm, I really am not going to be doing very much more on this. Um, you could place the windows, I suppose, but for me, that's about as much as I want to do drawing wise. And other than uh, the addition of two soldiers, which literally I'm not I'm not going to be overly give them some sort of. Let that cross over like that. Um, make them look ever so slightly different, but they are soldiers, so they should be semi regimented. And you've got I'll make that look like they've got some sort of ceremonial helmet on or something and body armour and all that kind of stuff but the only thing you have to and you don't have to do if you were going to do a pencil sketch or, or you, you might think well it's coming from the left the light the, the light is coming from there so lots of this area would be faded out, that would be, I'm not going to do all of this, but you get the point, it's, there'd be um, a bit of shadow in there. That will be slightly more shaded than that area. Re really, that's as much as needs to be done. That's a little bit dark there. And there you go. That is the pencil sketch ready for the watercolour painting. And all the other details that exist in this painting or this drawing will be placed in with the painting when we get to the detailed section of the painting. So, just to remind ourselves, we've looked at our... <clears throat> eyeline view can determine what the actual uh, image will look like uh, if you're looking up at it it tapers in towards the top if you're looking down it tapers down towards the bottom so I hope that's been informative for you this is part one of a two part process the painting will come next but please like and subscribe if you're not already doing that. And thank you for your time.